Hello guys, welcome back to Ray's Gaming Guitar Productions and today I will be showing you guys how to possibly double your FPS by adding FSR or DLSS to every game. Nowadays, games are getting more and more intensive, forcing you to buy your nearest jet engine to place inside of your PC case or you may have a lower end GPU and you're trying to play a game that is putting up a decent fight and some people don't feel like dealing with these issues. Well today I'm going to help you guys fix this. Let's get into it. Now before we start you will need an application named Lossless Scaling and you will need to know what resolution your target game performs best at. So if your target game exceeds 60 FPS at 720p then that's what you will use today. Once you have the game that you're trying to do this on and Lossless Scaling open, let's talk about game profiles, scaling mode, scaling type and all this stuff on the side. This should be very quick. So first let's talk about the scaling mode. You have two choices. You have auto and custom custom lets you do a whole bunch of advanced things to get it to your liking and it can be very confusing so that's why i would suggest that you use auto now using auto there are two and one is aspect ratio and the other is full screen full screen is of course for if a game is already full screen and you already have it at its set resolution and aspect ratio is if you already have it at windowed and its set resolution so that's why in the intro i said that you need to know what resolution your game performs best at so for instance if you are at 720p like i am and your game gets 60 fps then that is what you want to keep it at and you want to keep it on windowed so if i go to my graphics you guys will see it is at 720p windowed and if it's like that you want it to be on aspect ratio if this display mode was at full screen then you want to put this at full screen but it is way easier if you have it like this auto and aspect ratio and have your game windowed now next let's talk about scaling type this is the most confusing one but once you get the understanding of what each one of these are it can get a lot easier so the best ones out of all of them is amd fsr and ls1 nvidia image scaling isn't really that useful unless fsr and ls1 isn't working for you and most people if you already have a nvidia gpu as i do then the nvidia control panel already has it for you so you wouldn't even need to use it here if you're going to use this application i would suggest that you use ls1 so as you guys can see i have mine at ls1 and if you look at the sharpness of course as we all know when you are doing scaling for any game even if the game already supports fsr or dlss if you're using dlss or fsr it can cause the game to look blurry and that is something that nobody wants and that's also why they also add in a sharpness slider so as you guys see in the loss of scaling they also have a sharpness slider and turn this up and down determines how sharp your game is now for me personally i don't like the game being super sharp so i keep this low now, last but not least, you have performance. This is for, for instance, if you're playing any game that has FSR already compatible in it, you guys will see that they have performance, balanced, quality, and sometimes they might have like high quality or whatever. Now let's talk about the side panel. Now you guys can see they have frame generation. I'm not fully sure what it is. So I would say not to touch it unless you have done research and you know what it is. And they also have cursor options. This is also preference you can you can change it to whatever you want and then you have the rendering options so if you don't want to set vertical sync up within the game you can do it here double buffering vr support hdr support allow tearing legacy capture api and draw fps draw fps will basically do this but without using reboot toner which it's if you want to do that you can i personally would rather just use reboot tuner and then you have the gpu slash display this you don't need to even touch but as you guys can see preferred gpu is at auto and most people don't have multiple gpus in their pc and then you also have an output display this will automatically pick what display your game is already on so just keep it at auto and then you can also crop the stuff in the multi display mode so you, i think that might allow you to stretch it between the two screens now last but not least we have game profiles this is actually very useful and i'm glad they have this in their application so what this allows you to do is for instance you see i have another crab's treasure open if i was to click on this and click edit or if i was to add add whatever name i want and then browse for the game's exe file i can set up auto scale so for instance if i see i already have mine here if i edit and do auto scale 
it will scale the game to my screen's resolution as soon as the game opens which i normally have enabled on loss of scaling but i have it disabled for now because obs does not like when i scale onto my monitor the recording is just bad so you guys will see recordings later on in this video of a benchmark of the fps difference between putting it at 720p normally without the scaling putting it at 1080p without scaling and then 720p with scaling and you guys will see it is very good i've used this on another crap treasure i've used it on fallout 4 and both of those work good and i'm sure plenty of other games will work but depending on how old the game is you probably won't even need it okay now once you have everything perfect all you need to do is click scale and then find the game that you're trying to do this on so i'm gonna click on this and as you will see in a minute it will scale it so as you guys can see you can see two cursors but that's just obs but as you guys see it scaled the actual app to my screen and it would do this normally to the game so it would do this to another crap treasure or fallout 4 or any other steam epic games ea origin game that you were trying to do this on now as i said earlier obs does not enjoy recording these scaled games so i ended up having to record it without it being scaled which explains why the recording is blurry also, the FPS is being tanked by 20 FPS because OBS is encoding with the CPU instead of the regular RX 580 encoder, so the FPS is lower on both sides. Thank you guys for watching this video. If this video helped you, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you need help, I will always be lurking in the comments to reply to anyone with a question.